Illustrated Man. We take time out with Tony Cohn, one of Australia's leading professional tattooers and the foremost exponent of his art in Sydney. Tony is very much in demand of people wanting the finest in skin art. Tony is actually working on a customer, Jenny, when we arrive. But that doesn't stop us from turning on our cameras and having an in-depth with him. Tony naturally comes in contact with a whole range of people and the occasional weirdo or three. Well, there's people think that everyone gets a tattoo is weird. You know, but uh, like I've had people that want to be tattooed green all over so they can get zip themselves like a Martian, something like that, you know. Uh, <laughs> This was years ago, a guy was absolutely smothered in tattoos and he, he said, oh, I've tattooed in between all the spots green because uh, I was going to become a tattoo circus freak and they found someone who had more than me but now I want to be tattooed in green so I can be the tattooed Martian. But that's, <laughs> that's pretty rude. Take, take a years to colour a bloke in green even if you've had a lot of tattoos. <laughs> I don't think I don't have enough green on the shelf. Then there was the bloke with the drinking problem. Well, I was through the stage when the Vietnam War was on and he used to tattoo heaps and heaps of army guys, you know. And this is before all this, no, this is nearly 20 years ago. And I used to wash my uh, machines out in a glass and I just finished doing a lot of brown on this bloke. And a glass of dead old white turned it into brown, looks like beer. So this, um, in fact, I think I did have it in a schooner glass. So this guy's leaning back on the thing, he turned around, seen this drink, and he sculled it, you know, without even thinking, who's pretty drunk to drink a glass of dead old. I reckon really would have cleaned him out. <laughs> Underlying each of his stories, opinions or philosophies, his uncompromising commitment to the ancient art of tattooing comes through. Oh yes, and you only have to see some of his work to appreciate that. <laughs> Andy Hicks, who just has some of the prettiest legs in the business, couldn't speak highly enough of Tony. He's brilliant. He's um, put a, uh, a tattoo gun under his hand and he becomes the master. As you can see by uh, results, he's got the awards, he's got the reputation. Russell, himself a graphic artist, has won prizes all over Australia with Tony's work. Peter Wells, ex-Rose Tattoo guitarist, was also on hand. He's great. He's a very sensitive artist. He's fantastic. I like it when girls pass out. <laughs> <laughs> His shop is a kaleidoscope of colour with designs ranging from traditional to oriental to downright incredible. To cope with the crowds at the studio, Tony employs two other artists, Terry and Kim. We asked them how they came to be working with Tony and what they thought of him. Like we first met about well, 12 years ago in Amsterdam. Like I responded to him before then, you know. Like we corresponded to him for years and years, you know. Left England, like travel around tattooing, and I worked a few years in Germany. And I decided to come here, and I, if I'm going to come here, maybe as well come and work for the best. So I came and worked for Tony. When Tony finished with Jenny, we managed to pin him down for a history lesson on Australian tattoos, how his own style emerged, and what he believed about the future of tattooing. When I first started tattooing, I didn't like what I was seeing or what I was getting, but um, I just needed this boost. And then Danny Robinson sort of, he was involved in an affair, but his tattoos were a lot more feminine. It's pretty hard to explain. Uh, I'm not saying, like, it's that the work, like a lot of the great tattooists, their work is extremely feminine work. Uh, and this is why women, yeah, delegates, why women make good tattooists. Well, the idea of it was, was to incorporate the both, get the boldness and the blackness out, plus the pretty colours and the uh, detail. And I sort of just 
well, the, you've got to get your own style. You know, you, you, you change your style 20 times in a in a, uh, a lifetime of tattooing until you get the right one. Sometimes I think I'm still looking for it. Well, when I first started tattooing, I'd say a lot of people used to pass out. So you, every everybody's skin's different, and you've got to work skin different. Um, you ain't get a machine raw and full blast and hoe into it, you know. It was a, it's like digging them up with a pick. It's got to be very fine and everything's got to be tuned. Most everybody's been through it that started out tattooing, you know. Uh, there's no one to tell you. You've got to find out your, your right way yourself. A lot of people want to be tattooed, you know. They're not game. They think they're going to pass out in front of their friends, things like that. But I'd say there's more people out there that want to be tattooed and they're working up the courage, or they've just got to be in the right place at the right time. But the yuppie people, they, um, with these stick-on things and all that, they're great, because that's the greatest psychological move that anybody ever thought of, especially putting them on the kids, you know, because as soon as the kid's 18 years old, he can't get to the tattoo shop quick enough to get the real thing. And, uh, we tattoo a lot of, as you call, yuppies and all that, trendies, you know, the, the, the amount of, the the people now that are, that are coming into tattoo shops, is that, you know, it's just like anything, any boutique, anything. We tattoo a wider range. Like 20 years ago, it was basically sailors, bikers, things like that. Where now, you get the, the white collar workers, you know, they come in here with their briefcases and women, you know, you get some really glamorous looking women in their 30s, 40s. They only want a little tattoo just to say that they've been there and they've got the mark and they're as happy, happy as pig and shit.